Choosing a solar panel for a portable power station can be a bit of a challenge for some people. And so today I thought I would jump in and give you a few pointers on how to choose the right solar panel for your portable power station. Now the very first thing that you really need to look at isn't the total wattage or any of that kind of stuff when it comes to your power station. And you might think, wait a minute, that is the most important thing. Well, not when it comes to choosing a solar panel. The most important things, things, two things, that you need to pay attention to when choosing a portable solar panel or any solar panel for your power station are, in fact, the maximum voltage on the power station's solar input and the amperage rating of that power station. That's number one, folks. Maybe that power station can take 1,200 watts of solar, but if it, say, maxes out at 60 volts, like my Dabson's do, well, guess what? I can't put 100 volts of solar into that unit. If I have solar panels that maybe are, say, 40 or 50 volts, but they only put out five amps and it can handle more than that, well, that solar panel is also not gonna work very well. And one of the things that I've learned over the years of messing around with portable solar panels, and yes, I run several solar panels at my cabin. I've got over 2,400 watts of solar at the cabin, but it is a little different. For portable power stations, or what some people call solar generators, I don't really like that term because they don't generate power really, they're power stations. But for those, they're often restricted quite a bit to voltage. Now, big off-grid systems, yeah, they are too, based on the charge controller that you buy for it. But once you get a power station, you're locked into the charge controller on that power station. Take, for instance, my Dabson 2000L, which has a maximum voltage of 60 volts, a minimum of 12. It has a 20 amp charge controller, and the maximum wattage is 800 watts. That's important to know because if you bought a solar panel that produces 36 and a half volts at maximum power and say it's a 400 watt solar panel, well, you can't just take a second one of those, run it in series and plug it into that unit because then you'd have 73 volts and it would be too high. You'd have to run them in parallel and that could influence the amount of power you get out of them because some power stations are only gonna use 10 to 13 amps. So back to the Dabson. With that 60 volt maximum, I can take that 400 watt panel, but I've got to put it in parallel. And if it's a 15 amp panel, well, that means I'm going to be sending 30 amps to the Dabson and it's only going to use 20. So bearing that in mind, when choosing a solar panel for your power station, that is the first consideration to make. If it can take 800 watts and you want to get two 400 watt solar panels, you either need to be able to put them in series to get as close to the maximum voltage as you can, but not over it, or you need to put them in parallel so that you can get really close to or even above the maximum amperage of your power station. Now, the next thing that probably typically comes up is there are different kinds of portable solar panels. You've got the solar blanket style, you've got fairly flexible fold-up kinds, and then you've got rigid fold-up panels as well. And there are poly panels and mono panels and bifacial panels, all that kind of stuff. Well, here's what I'm gonna tell you. First of all, you wanna choose a panel that fits your lifestyle, frankly. If you're just having a panel that you're gonna maybe just hang over the balcony from time to time or set out in your yard, then it almost doesn't matter which kind you get. But if you've got something that you need to fold up and slide it into a closet and just have it there when you need it, those solar bag styles, they might work for that. But I think that the rigid panels are actually really good for that use. And believe it or not, I think there's a case for all of them. Now, I've got some rigid panels that I've been testing right now. They're made by a company called Zoop or Zoop W. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not actually sure how they pronounce their name, but it's Z-O-U-P-W. So we'll call them Zoop W. Anyway, they're actually pretty nice guys because here's the thing. I'm raising funds for a charity called Friends of Disabled Veterans. And Friends of Disabled Veterans is a local organization that's building a ranch nearby for disabled veterans and their families, as well as first responders and their families. And we're holding an event in which I'm putting a bunch of stuff in for them to raffle off to help them raise money. And when Zoop W came to me, I said, well, I'll tell you what. If you'll send me two of them that I can put in a raffle to help this charity out, 
I'd be happy to take a look at them. But I always got to be honest. And they said, no problem. We'd love to help the charity out. They're on the way. And they came in. My first impression was, well, these are rigid panels. Not a bad thing. I like the solar bag style myself because I'm an overlander and that's typically what I use portable solar panels for. And I like to have them that I can stuff down really small and stick out of the way somewhere. But I also like the rigid panels because they can be propped up. And that can give you a bit of an advantage at certain times. When the sun is low in the sky, Propping your panels up and keeping them nice and stiff, aiming towards the sun is a good thing. So I thought, okay, let me check these panels out. And the first thing I did was I opened up the pouch on the side and I went, wow. <laughs> Each of these panels, and by the way, this bag is, is pretty dusty because I was out doing some four wheeling and that's where I was testing these with. Each of their panels comes with this pigtail that will go to just about any power station out there because that's something else that you have to consider. If you're buying a solar panel for a Jackery, you better make sure it has the right end, <laughs> but they're the little ones and they're like these guys. And I think um, they're not even the eight millimeter ones. I think they're smaller. So that means you gotta get a solar panel that either has that connector like theirs do or you gotta get adapters or have a solar panel that comes with them. And frankly, these guys did hit the ball out of the park with that one because we've got a nice long, and I've often talked about this, I don't like it when companies put short cables in with their solar panels. That's ridiculous. Make something I can use. Well, this one is, geez, that's about eight feet long. That's awesome. But then comes with kind of crazy four different connectors on the end. But then it also comes with all of these adapters for any different kind that you might have. So that's really cool. It's got enough adapters that you can pretty much run this to anything. I like that, not bad, good job. It also comes with USB-A and USB-C ports in the little box inside the bag of that solar panel. I like it when they do that. Occasionally portable panel companies don't bother to do that and I frankly like that. Number two, a lot of these foldable style portable solar panels are really hard to set up, but the rigid ones aren't. So, okay, it was fairly easy to set up. It's got magnets to pop it open. You just set it up on the ground, kind of in a zigzag pattern and start pulling the legs out and it's got nice stiff legs with kind of feet on them. You set it up and away you go. And I was able to set up both panels and I plugged one into my Opus Mega One to see what kind of power I was getting out of it. And quite frankly, it was a bit smoky and hazy out and I did not have the best solar conditions. That seems to be something I'm saying a lot this summer. Although this is nowhere near as bad as it was say five years ago, but it's been a bit smoky around us because we've got some forest fires nearby. So I knew I wasn't gonna get max power out of it, but it was pulling about 160 plus watts out of that one panel. So I thought, okay, well these are 18 and a half, 18.6 volt panels. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just connect them in series, plug them into the Opus Mega One, let them run and see how they do. And I did that. And right off the bat, I started pulling over 300 watts, despite frankly, poor conditions. Now the max I saw was 325 watts, not bad at all. So folks, I've also heard from some of my viewers that they really like their panels, so I was glad to hear that. Pretty cool, and those panels will be donated to the raffle for Friends of Disabled Veterans. And one of the other things I'll tell you about solar panels is if you've got a power station that can take 800 watts, then do your best to get 800 watts in the same manufacturer, same panel as much as possible. So if I were looking at getting these panels for my Dabson 2000L that I mentioned earlier, I'd get four of them. Take myself all the way to that 800 watts and I would put them in a series parallel configuration. Now, yes, at $200 a panel, if I buy six of them, that's $1,200 and that is something to look at. And yes, I think those panels are on sale right now for $229.99. Now, if you're used to buying big panels for your off-grid cabin, it's going to be a little bit of a culture shock. But one thing that I've learned, portable solar panels are not the same thing. There's a lot more that goes into making a portable solar panel than there is in big rigid panels. So yes, if you can get them pretty close to a dollar a watt, that's actually not bad in today's economy. 
So there you have it, folks. I hope that helps you out. I want to thank all of my members for being here. Thank you so much for that. And I'm going to go ahead and drop another video right over here for you to check out. Folks, I appreciate you watching today, and I hope I helped you out. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.